Hey guys, welcome back to another video. As you might notice from the hardware right in front of us, this one will be a little bit different. We're going to build ourselves a new NAS. Up until now we've stored all of our data on Mike's NAS that he already had around, but we've come to the point where he used up all of that space. And since we don't want to delete our old files, well, we just need more storage. And we came up with three solutions to solve our problem. All right, so the first option would be to just buy a bunch of external hard drives and put our old projects on them so that we can use the existing NAS to work on our current projects. But since we didn't want to end up like Linus back in the old days, stacking hard drives somewhere in the bathroom, we figured we don't even want to take this route as we know where the bath is gonna end. The second option would be building ourselves a complete custom rack mounted NAS like the Swords of Storinator. Well, it would have been our preferred solution since it would provide us with the most interesting content for the video. But then again, we are not Linus and we can't afford to buy ourselves a petabyte worth of hard drives and put them into our non-existing rack into our non-existing server room. And while buying all of that hardware from scratch from the rack to the mounting enclosure, we would end up with at least 1500 bucks. And I know I know upgradability would be best, but that's a problem for future mob bros. And lastly, we don't have 10 editors working on the NAS uh, at the same time, so it would have been overkill anyways. And the third option would be just buy a regular NAS that comes with warranty and support if something goes wrong. Just fill it up with a bunch of hard drives and we're good to go and call it a day. Easy, right? But that would have been a little bit boring. So we ended up with option 3 plus. As you might already notice, we settled for a Synology disk station and two of 28 terabyte Western Digital MyBook Duo external hard drives. Why you might think? We're gonna put those MyBooks inside of the disk station. If you're confused, Oh, all right, it all makes sense later on. So this is the DS1520+, Plus, which was released in August 2020. It's the successor of the popular model 1019+, Plus and comes with an Intel Celeron quad-core CPU with a base clock of 2GHz and a burst of up to 2.7GHz, which makes it about 13% faster at indexing files than its predecessor. So in here we have um, the LAN cables and the power supply. And another power cable and in here we should have ah, the disk station itself oh, that thing is beautiful so here's the front we have five bays of hot swappable uh, drives um, we have some indication lights as well as a USB port you can use this one to connect it to a printer, an external hard drive, or even a USB. At the back, we have the ventilation fans, another USB port, like the one in the front. And we have a reset button, four of one gigabit LAN ports, the input for the power supply, and two external SATA ports for the expansion units. So you can hook this up to two of Synology's expansion units and get up to 15 bays. So what's also worth mentioning, it comes with 8GB of pre-installed RAM, which is not soldered on, so great for upgradability later on. And it has two M.2 slots, so you can cache your files on NVMEs instead of always accessing it from your slower drives. So we chose this model, since it's not just a typical cheap NAS that can't do anything but store files, but has actually quite a bit of processing power due to the Intel Celeron chip. So we can install our internal applications, no worries. Since the current NAS we're using is also a Synology one, we got the chance to get a look at the software beforehand and everything is easy to configure with the Disk Station Manager. You can also install existing packages like Plesk, Apache, GitLab or just any Docker container that you want. Now in terms of storage, like I said before, this unit has 5 hot swappable bays in the front, which we fill up with 14 terabytes of Western Digital Red Drives. Since we will go for RAID 6, two of those will be used for parity and we will end up with about 42 terabytes of usable storage. That should be quite enough for some time, and even if we run out, we can just hook up those expansion units from Synology and get up to a total of 15 base. Now back to those Western Digital MyBooks here. Didn't we say we were going for 5 14 terabytes of Western Digital Red Drives? Well, you see, each of those external hard drives actually contains two of those 14 terabytes Western Digital Drives. And for some inexplicable reason, they are a lot cheaper than going with two regular Red Drives. And since 28 terabytes is the largest capacity these are available, we decided to go for the 14 terabyte drives. So let's open up these babies and get to our discounted drives. Oh yeah, and we know there are cheaper 14 terabytes external hard drives out there, but those only contain white label drives, so it could be a red drive, 
but it doesn't have to be. And we wanted to be on the safe side, so we went for the red drives. You can just take a look around, there are a lot of vlogs and posts about it, how people are filling the NAS this way for cheap. Now, as you can see, these are real Western Digital red drives in there. So with the single one that we bought for the regular price, we ended up with five 14 terabyte drives, as well as two enclosures and USB-C cables for free. So now let's take our five drives and insert them into our NAS. Now all that's left is putting in our two NVMe SSDs for caching. We just went for two 1TB Western Digital Blues, since those are fairly cheap and sufficient enough for holding a whole project that we are currently working on. Alright, so the NAS is now powered on and connected to the network. Let's open the configuration page in our browser. For that we just go straight to the IP address of the NAS within the network. And we are directly greeted by the setup page. So let's start the initial setup and install the most recent version of Disk Station Manager, which is Synology's own Linux-based operating system that will be running on this NAS. And as you can see, we are instantly warned that all data on the drives will be wiped. So make sure to always remove your valuable data from the drives before using them to set up a NAS. All right, so let's speed this up a bit. And we're done. So first off, we need to choose the server name for our NAS and also create an admin account. We're gonna skip Quick Connect for now as we would need to create a Synology account for that. And as per usual, we're greeted with a lot of pop-ups and tooltips. And after we found our way through them, a few basic widgets and pin them to the desktop. This will allow us to keep a good and quick overview on the current status of the NAS, like how much storage is used, CPU and memory load, or currently connected users and network activity. Basically, like a primitive version of Mobro, if you will. And just as a last checkup, let's make sure that we have the final software version. So all good. So now we will actually configure and create our storage pool. For that we need the storage manager, which will just drop to the desktop for easier access in the future. Having a look through the menus, you can see that we don't have a storage pool yet. But as you can see, all of our 5 drives as well as the two installed NVMe SSDs are listed, so that's looking good. Earlier in the video, we mentioned that we are going for RAID 6. But since we would essentially lose 2 fifths of our total capacity, we instead opted to go with RAID 5. That leaves us with one drive for parity, or in other words, we can lose one drive without losing data compared to the two drives on RAID 6. But on the other hand, we will gain an additional 14 terabytes of space, which we'll probably appreciate at some point in the future. So we're gonna of course use all of our five drives for that RAID. And as you can see, we're gonna have just a shy of 51 terabytes of space available on the resulting partition. Alright, so that's gonna take some time to initialize, as it needs to verify all the drives. What we're now gonna do is create a volume on that storage pool we just created. So we're gonna select our RAID 5 and then the default BTRFS file system, as it offers much more functionality and protection mechanisms. And since the RAID only supports one volume, well of course we're going to lose all the available capacity. Alright, so let's give it some time to set up and initialize. Alright, time to set up our NVMe SSDs. Since we installed two of them, we're gonna go for a read-write cache that will accelerate the access to our data both ways. As you can see, this will create a RAID 1 from our SSDs, which means that data is always written to both of them and we're still fine if one of them fails. This is important, as using the SSDs as write cache basically means that incoming data is written first to the quick SSDs and then synced to the way slower rate of hard drives in the background. So for some period of time, the data will only be stored on the SSDs and therefore it's important that also use them in a RAID configuration to protect the data from a drive failure on the SSDs. 
This also means that we are going to have only an effective cache size of 1 terabyte. But this should be more than enough for the one or two video projects we normally work on concurrently. So as you can see the cache is now being mounted to our volume and both drives are used. All that's left to do is to check out that the NAS actually works and we can store files on it. Now we're just gonna create a new shared folder. We're just giving everyone full access for now as we're gonna remove it anyways after this. So let's jump over to our file explorer and type in the IP address of the NAS. And there's our folder we just created. Now just quickly create a new file and move back to the NAS. And as you can see, our file is here. So everything is set up correctly and it works. Only thing left to do now is set up all the users properly and then migrate all of our data onto the NAS. Thanks to all of our supporters on Patreon. You guys made this possible. If you want to join them, the links will be in the description. Subscribe to our channel if you want to see more content like this and hit the bell button to get notified. Check out our social media and our forum. The links will be in the description. And I hope to see you guys next time.